Hello and welcome back, MC1 Gamer, here bringing you something, um, I guess, a little bit different. So this is a Kickstarter that I think I think that a lot of people really should know about. If they don't already, you should check, check it out. It's just a, a, a really, really... Uh, one of those one of those gems that I think that don't come around very often with Kickstarter. There's a few of them here and there. This is an incredible one. This is called Mythic Battles Pantheon. And I know this is a little bit different, but you know, you guys know that I jump off the uh, the Warhammer rails quite a bit. And you know, I looked at things like Bolt Action and various other games, Frostgrave and Mordheim, uh, which is Warhammer, but it's a different type of Warhammer. This is, uh, in my opinion. Probably one of the best things going on in Kickstarter right now. Just my opinion. It's really up my alley. When I was growing up, um, anything that was was mythology was a big thing. Before I even got into comic books, it was about mythology, and that stayed with me. And while I studied and enjoyed many different pantheons, obviously the Greek uh, gods and all the stories, you know, the trials of Hercules and whatnot, they were all a big deal. This is all about that. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about uh, what this is because I think you should take a look at it. You know, I've been involved in other Kickstarters uh, before, just a few of them. I've been lucky enough that they've all been great. Just look at those figures. <laughs> this is uh, this is something that really is up my alley. So if you're really interested in anything when it comes to like, uh, the, you know, the Greek gods or the... Um, uh, the uh, let me see if I can get off this. Um, th let, let me give you some more details. If you haven't seen anything about this, I'll give you some some details about it. You should go and check it out if it looks like something that you're interested. Let me just say that within the first day, over three hundred thousand uh, dollars pledged, <laughs> thirty almost thirty four hundred backers within the first, literally the first minute. Their early bird special blew away. Uh, uh, it was all gone, and I, I. The only reason why I didn't get it is because I was on my mobile phone and I couldn't react quick enough because all my information was already stored there, uh, which kind of sucked. But it was only a ten dollar difference. So for just the main pledge, there's so much in this box and so much that's amazing. The sculpts are fantastic. Check out Beasts of War. They did actually a full-on, not only a full-on video with their Weekender where they did an interview, but they actually did a full game. And that'll give you an idea of not only the gameplay, but I'm going to go over some of those details as well. But they actually show some really cool painted figures, uh, and they had the actual figures there. These are these are just amazing sculpts. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, it's kind of a mesh between a card game and a tabletop war game. Uh, we've seen a lot of those hybrids uh, with new games that have come out, and it really resonates with some people, some people it doesn't. This is, I think, one of the best combinations of the two. It's not too much of a card game. It's not just plain dice. It really works well. And this is, by the way, just the starter stuff, not even all the stretch goals. There's a lot of stuff in this. So just to go through the details, it's uh, two to four players. You can play uh, free-for-all or you can play teams. Uh, the average time, they say, is 90 minutes. The beginning pledge is 100 bucks. All right? That's you know, it's a hundred bucks. It's not exactly cheap, but I just think what you get is just uh, astonishing. They give you not only full great artwork, but they also are providing paint guides for painting every one of these models, which is crazy. All right, so uh, to um, to try and zoom in a little bit, let's see if I can get a little bit closer here, and you can see maybe a little bit more of what these things look like. These are the actual sculpts. They're gorgeous, and one of the things a lot of people, uh, you know, I'm sure would would think about and say, "Hmm, I'm not really, I'm worried about this." Is these spindly parts, like these spears? Well, they're doing hard plastic. I think ABS to make sure that all those spindly parts are solid, not going to bend or break easily in any way, and that is really important. And this stuff comes all assembled. You don't have to actually build it, which I know is part of the hobby and a lot of the things that you do that I do, but it's also nice to be able to get this stuff straight out of the box and be able to play it, not have to build it, um, and uh, just have to be able to go and paint it. So they all come with cards, which gives you the de the uh, um, deteriorating uh, profile as these uh, these characters get wounded. Essentially what the storyline is, is, and I'll just zoom up here so you can really just sit on this picture of the models while I go and talk about it. Essentially the story is it's the, it's, it's, the uh, the titans um, have been released, and there is this huge war among the gods with the heroes picking sides against the titans, and the, pretty much everybody is laid to waste. When all is said and done, 
the power of the gods has been shattered and fragments of god power are strewn about the land but the gods have been diminished to the point where they're not quite as immortal as they were and they're uh they're still very very powerful and they're the apex characters and powers on the board without a doubt but they're very much more in line also with the size structure you see in ancient mythology, where they're like three times the height of a regular, of a standard person. Um, and then, you know, the, the, uh, the difference between standard troops and the real heroes is also pr pronounced. So there's, they just really looked apart with what you might have grown up with. And it really does fit with a lot of the drawings and depictions you see in, 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 in uh, um, mythology and in, in, in pictures from, uh, from that period. So, while not everything is going to be absolutely authentic and historically accurate, they've really tried to kind of stick to that, and they've and they've tried to be, adhere to it. And within the context that this is a game, uh, and and it really works well in, to try and you know kind of toe that line between those two. So it is pretty cool that we, we, during that the story process also uh, the gates to uh, to hell the underworld basically has has opened up, and all the dead heroes from these conflicts and creatures and monsters and whatnot have been able to rise up and uh and now they're all doing battle to re to gain control and find uh, find the 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 fragments of god powers called the Amphalus, you know and and maybe this is going to change the balance of power but all these allies from before are now po are now pitted against each other and there can also of course be teams but the way this um this looks let's go take a look so you have there's four core gods, but there's already one that's Kickstarter exclusive. You got Zeus, Ares, Athena, and Hades, and I'll get a little closer pick on these. Uh, this is already included in just the basic uh, box. For heroes, there's some really cool heroes: Odysseus, Atlantia, um, Atlanta, Leonidas, Achilles, and Hercules. Uh, all have different, obviously, methods on how they can play on the battle, uh, the tabletop. Some initial monsters, some of the very classic ones: the Hydra, the Minotaur, the Medusa, Cerberus. Uh, um, just beautiful, beautiful sculpts. Again, I've seen the videos. If you haven't already, go check them out. I'm going to, again, try to get a little bit more cl uh, close up so you can see what this stuff looks like. There's several different, uh, different units that you get to pick. Um, you know, Hellhounds, Hell Warriors, uh, Hoplites, Spartans, Centaurs, and Amazons. Uh, and there's more that have been unlocked already. Like I said, in the first 24 hours, this thing has already generated over $300,000 and there's 29 days to go. Um, so all the different cards, uh, uh, specific dice, they have a really great dice mechanic in this that seems a little bit wonky when you first hear about it. But once you see it actually utilized, it works really well. You know, you, depending on the defense of the character that you're trying to attack, you need to be able to match that number. And the dice are measured in between, you know, one and five with one blank. If you roll, get a five, you have the option to roll that five again and get more. So something with like a seven, you need to roll a two on the follow-up dice. And then you have the five added to whatever the successive roll is. That being said, if you have other dice that are not fives, they count as one, whatever they are, and then you can add them up to whatever the number is. But you have to make you, you have to play the strategy, and there's some kind of a you know there's also some randomness involved as well to try to get to the number you want and see how many uh, of these dice you want to combine and risk maybe trying to get an extra wound that you want to apply onto your uh, the, the your target. In addition, there are uh, some powers that will come into play depending on what you get. For instance, enough blanks, some characters will actually be able to use those blank rolls uh, to, to do great throws or to do great feats. Whatever they are, they come into play on the dice rolls. So there's very much a strategy on how you use your dice, not just roll the dice and see what happens. What you do with those dice can, op can maximize the capabilities of, you know, of that, that attack round. Um, they come with f um, two double-sided boards. I would love to see a stretch goal here where these guys have partnered up with um, Game Mats EU or Frontline Gaming, and they actually provided the neoprene like mouse pad mats for these. But they already they do provide you, just like their Conan Kickstarter, this, this Kickstarter also provides you with four different maps. So the Gates of Tartarus, the Elysian Fields, the Mount Olympus, stuff like that. And they'll be, I'm sure, from, from what they've said, they will be releasing others. Plus, they come with some of these cardboard terrain, but already there's been terrain that is replacing this that is um, plastic that's been included because of the stretch goals. So a, a freebie all automatically inclu included in the Kickstarter is an extra god, which is Apollo. Uh, and the gods, really, they act really differently, uh, and they have different power sets and different ways you can utilize them. And 
I don't know if I'll do it justice. There are other videos out there, mainly by the guys who are running this game, as well as what you might see on uh, Beasts of War, for example, that I think would do the better justice to try and explain the gameplay. I can give you more of a high-level synopsis, but go check that stuff out. These are the stretch goals that have already been unlocked. You got a dice bag, some new sculpts on the Hellhounds, plastic uh, uh, Greek columns. These are an Arf an infernal artillerymen, another monster, Arachne, another monster, the Nemean Lion, which is awesome. Uh, the only one that has the better defense than him is, I think, Achilles. Um, these are broken columns. Uh, there's uh, these archers. So you have, like, you know, Spartans and Hoplites. Now you have archers, some giant spiders, and some things that are on the way. And I thought, oh, yeah, this is not even completely up to date. Um, uh, Jason uh, from Jason and the Argonauts has already been uh, unlocked, who is a hero in this um, in this as well. So you can see what the stretch goals are, and you get a little idea of the beauty of the, some of these sculpts as I scroll through this stuff. And again, some of the terrain that's been included, um, and you know, just you look at the details on these. Uh, I don't know if the uh, spiders are not exactly very sexy, but hey, look at that lion. That Nemean lion is pretty damn big too, bigger than uh, the average hero. This is a monster. Monsters are supposed to be pretty dramatic. Um, can't wait to see if they bring out something like a kraken or something like that. But I got to believe that we're going to see things like a cyclops. Uh, and other, you know, known mythological, uh, Greek mythology creatures as well as other characters. So they've already unlocked uh, Jason next on the horizon, which is really just around the corner. This is probably going to happen before the end of the day. If it hasn't happened already, is another god, Hermes. Uh, there's the Argonauts, who are going to be in the 360 range. I bet you that it will happen, if not today, by tomorrow. So you can bring those in. Um, and then they've already started including some of the add-ons, which, you know, this one isn't one that I particularly uh, um, and jazzed about, but it looks pretty cool, and I'll have to see how it plays before I really make a decision, but I'm not as well familiar with it. I, this might be just created specifically for this. I don't remember anything in the background. Uh, some of these are known characters, but the combination of it, these are um, judges that were, uh, I guess, uh, Persephone, when Hades left the underworld to go battle on the surface, she goes and recruits these three judges, uh, and uh, they are now able to, when, once all the creatures from the underworld escaped, they're like, well, hell, that, well, hell with this. No pun intended, but let's go up there and uh, you know stake our claim. So these guys can be also deployed into the game. Um, you have these great cards that show you the powers and abilities, as well as the ability again to track. You have this uh, this this clip that you can maneuver down. You can see you know where you are in you know, a way to keep track of it. Um, there are tokens in the game and stuff. They have this circular disc dial thing, but I guess people didn't like it because you couldn't see with the dial what was where your next wound levels were and how you might diminish in a couple of wounds to take some risks and chances and people wanted more of this I think either one would have been fine so here's a picture of Zeus look at that look at that figure this is probably not even the best I mean I'm zoomed in a little bit this is not even the best way to see it there's better pictures of it where uh, and I'll see if I can go jump over to them but that's the actual sculpt and it looks like that they show the videos that they've shown close up show the sculpt it looks like this Okay, it's not like, you know, okay, it's not quite as much detail. I've seen the painted models. They're just, they look amazing. Now, of course, they're done by professional painters. But some of us in the community, not me, but some of us are really pretty friggin' proficient painters and can probably do some crazy jobs on these figures. These are some incredible details. It's one of the, I think, the, the one thing universally that everybody has said, that the sculpts on the, on, in this Kickstarter are sick. They're some of the best that have seen, been seen. People have been saying, you know, calling back to like Rackham on how that has been uh, expressed as some of the best stuff that's out there and best stuff to date. Uh, and and who knows, maybe some of those people are actually involved in this. But this is incredible. Here's, <coughs> excuse me, here's Hades. Really cool, very aggressive character. One of the ways he, oh, let me talk about Zeus a little bit. One of the ways Zeus plays is that he's probably one of the most balanced of these starting gods. He certainly has the most powerful ranged attack in his lightning bolt. Um, they Some of these gods have a little more strategic element to them. He's more middle of the road. Uh, like, for instance, Athena has, is very strategic. She has certain cards that you get access to that allows you to do more things as opposed to just running in there like Ares and just being a big brute and you know, wrecking face, but Zeus is more of a balanced uh, um, character, but he's well known to have the best long range attack out there. Hades has a really interesting mechanic. He, he gets more powerful as creatures of any type die. If you lose heroes, you lose rank and file troops, he gets more powerful, which makes sense. You know, he's the god of the underworld. 
Athena, again, uh, very strategic. She's not as physically strong as the other guys, but the abilities that she has can activate more units. So you can get a lot more done. You can make more moves. You can do double actions. So there's a lot more depth in what she can bring to the table than just you know rushing in there like Ares, who look at this sculpt? Look at this sculpt for Ares, man. That just looks great. Who just you just you run this guy forward, and it's really just a no-brainer. You beat the shit out of whatever you're up against. So here's a little bit better picture. There we go. This is this is a better picture of the sculpt. These are the this says plastic production samples. Look at that. And these are substantially bigger than the standard than the rate. They're going to tower over everything else except for maybe the biggest of the monsters. Um, so you're going to have one god, you're going to pick one, and then you the way the initial deployment works is you pick which god you want, and then you have a certain X number of points depending on the size of game you're playing. I think there's a standard size. I don't know if you can go higher or lower, but there's a basic standard size. And what you do is, is you with those points you alternate, you know, with your with your opponent or with the other players that are in the game because you have, have up to four, and you can pick different um, uh, units one by one that you're whether they're monsters or heroes or standard troop types. And until you fill up all your points, and they'll give you all different types of benefits. There's all different types of things that come to bear that enhance uh, the ability to do to, to do tactical maneuvers, to uh, have ranged attacks, to traverse terrain, depending on what you're picking. Uh, and that's how you build up. And you can each one each time you pick something different, even if you stick with let's say one god for several games, you can you can totally change the game uh, completely, which makes sense. I mean, anybody who's played any of these types of games knows that the dynamic of just one different troop type and the different types of synergies that included and there are definitely synergies that are uh, that are involved in this game depending on what you pick things that complement and, and enhance uh, stand you know just uh, uh, default boilerplate abilities will be profoundly magnified depending on what combos you take that is definitely going to be the case in this game here's another picture of Hades and Athena um, and uh, just yeah, it's just really beautiful. I, I think this is going to be a joy to paint. I am a novice painter. I'm learning from a lot of really good people online who put good videos up and a lot of suggestions I get from people who know what they're doing and have been doing a lot longer than I have. Um, I, I, I normally would be intimidated by trying to, to uh, paint some models like this. No longer, um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to do. Uh, and uh, and I, just, I, I love that they're going to be including a... a, a, a step by step hey if you this if you if you're new to painting and you don't have your own method and you don't understand color you know color uh, theory and whatnot uh, this is how you should do it to get a good quality paint job that's priceless in my opinion uh, because you know you hey, you could just you could just do a basic uh, you know uh, zenithal highlighting on these I've seen that in some of the demo videos uh, and they still look great but if you really want to go to town with this stuff you can and you should um, Hercules or Heracles is the Greek name and that's how they include it here you know he's he's a brute his big thing is Go to play areas where there are terrain, pick it up and throw it. He does some pretty good damage. Um, Achilles, his basic thing is uh, he's hard to hurt. He has one of the best, if not the best, toughness, at least so far in game, except for maybe the Anemian Lion. And they have just a little bit of slant on how they do it. But he's extremely resilient, but not impossible to hurt and kill. Leonidas, uh, a, a very good tactician, good leader in the game, and uh, uh, he has certain abilities, I think, where units around him can get activated. Uh, and uh, um, you know they can actually activate for free. Um, Odysseus, a much greater tactician. He's kind of like a mini, almost a mini Athena in terms of some of the benefits he can bring to the game. Not as much of a physical combatant, but certainly can hold his own. Um, I don't know much about uh, Atlanta, but I got to admit that she's uh, very similar. She's a, kind of a, a Amazon heroine, uh, and certainly uh, with a powerful ranged attack. So um, I haven't seen any details about her, but I did do a quick glance on the card and uh you know some of the more close-ups here of a spartan uh no that's not a spartan leonidas um odysseus and uh and achilles and here's a good close-up of atlanta and hercules i'm not so sure yeah, about the club here i mean <laughs> i would love to i might convert this myself just to have it in a little different way i kind of like the picture of it but i like that he's in a kind of a a, a, a come at me bro uh, type of a <laughs> type of a look too. Um, some of the monsters. Here's the Medusa. I wish this was a little closer. Let me see if we can get further down. We get a bare close up on the Medusa. Yes, she can turn the, her opponent to stone. Here's a picture of uh, the Minotaur, Cerberus, who is a just gigantic. I mean, most of the heroes I think come maybe up to at most the uh, chin uh, of you know of one of his mouths. The Hydra is as big as any uh, as anything here. I think it's the biggest thing released so far. Uh, probably the height of its heads are a little bit uh, about the same height maybe as one of the gods. 
here's a good picture of the yeah there we go here's a good picture of the hydra and the minotaur or minotaur depending on how you uh you want to pronounce it awesome looking sculpts my goodness all right cerberus just with the example of another monster here um here are the the medusa i wonder if they can do side by sides here a little more close-ups on the amazons very cool looking pics a couple of centaurs these are all included in the box I mean, I'm just, I'm very jazzed about it. I hope you guys are too. If this is something you're interested in, take a closer look at this. Just gorgeous pictures, these hoplites, you know, Spartans. I'm surprised Spartans don't have the spears, but they had to, I guess, make them a little bit different from the, the uh, standard hoplites. Here we go. Here's some closer pictures of the, uh, a, that's a Spartan and an Amazon. Unbelievable sculpts, just absolutely gorgeous. There's a um, hoplite with a centaur and the hellhound and hell warrior. And, of course, my phone always does this. While I'm doing a video. <laughs> In any case, here we go. Let's look a little further down. Uh, yes, yeah, so all full-color uh, cards. So you make up your deck. You have things like the Art of War cards, which allow you to, uh, to get additional actions. Uh, an Emphalus card can double as many different things as you find these basically the god power pieces that are scattered about the board. Uh, and you have to find these cards in your deck to actually activate various units. And an Art of Word card can allow you to put, pull, pull more stuff from a deck or even go in and hunt and search for cards that you need. So there could be there's a lot of strategy on what you play, how you play it, how you manage your deck. So anybody who's a deck playing uh, person who plays, you know, Magic, Pokemon, any of these, ma there's so many. I mean, uh, there's more than I can count. But these th that kind of strategy will come into play as well. So that plus the dice strategy plus movement about the board, the fact it's a miniature game, it's not just a card game, of course, really has an impact. And you know, your movement around the board matters. Okay, you have ranges, so it's a tactical game in terms of tabletop uh, war gaming as well. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, let's take a look. Yeah, there's a dice. Uh, you can use any dice. You don't have to have these. I think it comes with 10 of them, which means that probably uh, th that's the maximum toughness or amount of dice that you can roll in any one scenario. So if you're trying to match that, you know, getting at least a point on any toughness. Here are the boards. Boards look great. Hold on. The boards look phenomenal. I'm going to go disconnect my phone because everybody seems to call when I do this. Um, the boards look great. Great color pictures. Again, I'd love to see these in neoprene mats. Uh, it would be wonderful. Here we go. Tartarus, the Labyrinth, uh, Olympus, and the River Styx. This is at the edge of the Styx, just as it's uh, reaching up from the underworld. And, uh, yeah, the boards are very nice co quality. They show a picture of the ones that were included in the actual Conan game, which looked incredible. And they have these different zones. So these are the zones. This is just a slice of one of the boards. These are the different zones um, where some of these things could have the various terrain, trees, or whatnot, and that can be utilized, especially if you're a strong character like uh, Her the, you know, Heracles and be able to chuck them. They also provide different types of things like cover or enhancements onto your, your character. Certain, you can get pluses to your saves, pluses to your, um, to your, uh, to your hit rolls. Um, you know, depending whether you have cover, if you're up in elevation, you're able to see over um, uh, the, the squares that the, these, these board sections that could block line of sight. So ranged weapons don't, you know, don't, have, you know, if you have a, one of these sections occupied, you cannot shoot past them unless you have an elevated position, stuff like that are some of the rules that are involved in the game. And uh, yeah, this is, so this is the, yeah, this is a little bit more of a synopsis of the core content. So check it out, check out the videos that are associated with this. Check out the uh, videos with Beasts of War. I really, really think that if this is even remotely something you might be interested in, uh, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I can't wait to there's there's Apollo. This is a great look at Apollo here. Just a, look look at the details on this. I just cannot wait to get see this stuff fully painted. Um, and uh, hey, you know, if 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 you're looking for a Kickstarter, if you're looking for a new game, consider this stuff. I'm not you know I'm not affiliated with these guys. I just have a little pa have a passion for for this type of a game and for the setting of this game, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you know just where it goes. I'm impressed beyond belief that the that this Kickstarter just blew the doors open in day one. You know I've been involved in two other Kickstarters uh, before this that were 3D uh, printing, and then I had two other Kickstarters prior to that. I'm lucky that all of them have been funded. I've kind of picked and chosen the ones that I've wanted to be part of, and I've gotten lucky in that regard. 
but these uh, this this is one of the one of the ones that I think that is actually taken off the fastest. I mean, I've been I was involved in a um, in uh, one of the Bones ones. I was involved in uh, uh, the Dwarven Forge. Uh, you know, the th those really flew as well. Um, Dwarven Forge, you know, again, really really went fast. But I'm incredibly impressed that you know day one. Uh, within 24 hours, they're already over 300k, and I can't wait to see what new stuff they come up with as far as stretch goals. They just keep it. They, they, they actually the stretch goals have had to. Uh, they've had to really kind of catch up with the speed at which people are uh, are are pledging to try and put this stuff out there. And I guess for the really popular Kickstarters, maybe that's not too much of a surprise. It was a surprise for me because I haven't watched this stuff live before. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're getting involved in this and you're just as excited as I am for it, uh, you know, feel free to comment on it. And uh, you know, if you get, catch some of the videos on the actual gameplay, let me know how that goes. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. I think they lo it looks amazing. I can't wait to get it on the table and uh, get some games in with this. At the very least, you know, get the models and just paint them up, and uh, and I think it's going to be cool. So look out for more content that I have coming up. Not obviously, I got more three three uh, D printing stuff. Some more uh, battle reports and uh, other shows, uh, tactics, unlocking Age of Sigmar, and more conversion episodes coming up. And if there's things that you want to see, things that you're interested in, um, feel free to go and uh, shoot over a message to me, uh, Q&A as well, and I'll be happy to include it. Have a great day, everybody.